What's going on guys? We're gonna go through something pretty simple today, but it's a frequently asked question I get uh, rather be on Instagram or uh, anywhere else. And that's what drone I use uh, pretty much everywhere and why this has become kind of the, uh, the go-to from production to vlogs to just a little bit of everything. starters I had the Mavic uh, 2 Pro uh, which was uh, still a, a really good drone still is a really good drone had that up until about three months ago this is the Mavic Air or Air 2S I should say and when it came out one of the reasons that it kind of appealed for me is it had some new uh, sensor technology right uh, the last one I had was a one inch hassle band uh, which I believe was like 24 megapixel and this one again was just different sensor a little bit smaller profile had some new upgraded like features to it and uh, I was just doing for upgrade I ran that Mavic 2 for probably five six months the first thing that I noticed out of the box right away was like this is a significantly smaller drone now all the Mavics are pretty small right I mean if you're if you're referencing them versus the Phantoms which are the big white ones one through even the four uh, they were all much bigger machines and these guys are just all small this isn't that much smaller than the Mavic uh, 2 Pro I had but it is a little bit smaller I'd say like 20% smaller the other thing is its configuration is a little bit different the body is a little bit different this one comes with a little bit different remote the last one I had I use my iPad with frequently uh, this one has like a little adjustable arm that pops out to hold your phone specifically you kind of take or leave it and, the, and honestly the remote's a little bit bulky for my liking real quick before you put it up in the air this is the first I think first one that I know that uh, the DJI has come out with that came with ND filters ND filters are used to knock down light in some situations like this when you want to keep your settings at either like native or base ISO so, and uh, and you still want to have a nice you know nice look to it. It's not all blown out or whatnot. To get into why someone needs an ND in front of their sensor, probably a different video. But the nice thing is, is you just have to buy these, and this one came with it. They're super easy. They kind of click on and turn. Uh, you get a 4, 8, a 16, and a 32. I have the 32 on there right now because it is about as bright as it gets. Um, we have like you know high noon sun, and uh, I want to bring those settings down as much as possible. So I'm gonna put as much ND on there as possible. But again, versus having to buy aftermarket third party they gave you some with it which is kind of cool so it's the first one that i bought that comes with the nds we're gonna bring this thing in the air we're gonna go through some of the different settings and kind of how someone who maybe might just want to buy a drone for doing some filming like on hikes and more of a personal project to like how i can still use this thing on like big production shoots and then and then why and every which way in between so let's get in the air and uh we'll talk about the camera Okay, so one of the first things that I'll talk about is these drones, if someone is just getting into this whole idea of never flown a drone before, or someone is like me and uses it for production or what they do for a living, this is the first one that really kind of has everything encompassing in it. And the reason I say this, one, it's the size, we talked about that. Two, it's got a bunch of different options, uh, things like obstacle avoidance. In fact, it's got their latest software of obstacle avoidance, which literally allows you to like zigzag between trees automatically. So in other words, the past obstacle avoidance would have uh, pretty much a 360 bubble around you that if you come across something, it would stop, right? Well, this one actually has it where it will feel its way around trees and continue on a path. Obviously, if the path hits a V and it can't go over it, it'll stop. But uh, it's impressive how good the obstacle avoidance has gotten. Now, just being honest with you, uh, I don't really use any of those features much because a lot of times when I'm flying, I actually am trying to get close to objects. Now, I think I have a little over like, it's like 1,500 or 1,600 confirmed flights in my DJI profile, which is a lot because I've been flying them for close to five years. I've gotten used to the controls. You can dabble with that. To start off with, I suggest leaving them on and uh, and just going through the paces until you get comfortable taking them off. And honestly, uh, in some situations, if I know I'm flying in an area I can't see a whole lot or there's a lot of things like power lines, I'll flip it on just in case. But for the most part, I fly with those features off. Now, this drone specifically has something new. Uh, it's called Master Shots. Master Shots is incredibly useful for someone who's trying to get the most of their drone when they're filming by themselves, right? So in a situation where I'm filming a boat and another boat, I have them over there, I'm this one, I can film, do my whatever I need to do, make them look cool, awesome, I'm controlling the, you know, the remote. If you're by yourself and you don't have someone to film you and you're trying to look like you're fishing or trying to look like you're doing something, rather be hiking or whatever, to have this program in the uh, Air S2 is, is clutch. So it literally is as simple as clicking Master Shots you drag a little box over your subject, you click go, and it'll automatically give you, I wanna say it's like five or six different frames 
of shots. And, uh, and I mean like, it'll go right on top of you and go up. It'll circle the boat. It'll circle you on the top of a peak sitting there. It goes through an entire uh, array of shots that you'll be able to use filming yourself and the drone shows it does it for you. They've had like active track in the past where it can follow boats or it can follow a car or something like that and it's been good. But this master shots lets you do all kinds of things, especially if you're by yourself. Now, most of the time I got someone with me or, or Logan's with me filming something, so I really don't have use for it myself. But if you're one of those people who's buying this as a first time drone, wants to film themselves, that master shots is ridiculous. And what you get from it, I mean, it's phenomenal. So literally after like it was three taps, uh, I selected how far I wanted the drone to come out, right? Marked my boat as a waypoint, and I can just set this here and, and let it do its thing. Uh, a normal situation, if you're by yourself, you'd get up, you'd fish, but I'm gonna do right now. But let's just see what these shots come back as, because it's all movements and it's all choreographed, so to speak. So like it literally will go through a bunch of them. I'm just gonna let it do its thing. I'm pretty sure you can fine tune it too. So let's say like, I mean, I'm in an unethic lake, so the farther you know up the drone goes, the more wide and far it goes. It's kind of cool, right? But if you were in more of a confined area, you can set parameters for it. Um, but it'll actually start and stop record for you. Again, map the flight plan for you. Uh, pretty much just to give you an assortment of shots to choose from when you're making your vlog or whatever you're doing. the what I would call like professional side of uh, what the Air S2 does or Air 2 S. I'm gonna say that a lot in this video but that's all right this sensor I mean a lot of people will, will look just resolution for how good a drone is um, I shot a lot of 4k 24 and a lot of 4k 60 with that last Mavic this can do 5.4k at 24 or 30 and 24 I like to shoot in quite a bit because it matches uh, kind of an edgy fast look if you don't understand frame rates that's a whole other discussion on another video but in terms of its dynamic range uh, their new D-Log is, or their updated D-Log is, this footage has blended together with my other footage, which would be Sony S-Log 3, or possibly once in a while some GoPro footage in, you know, their own flat color. It's blended with my other cameras better than I've ever had a drone do before. And that's important because a lot of times when we're, when we're color grading and we're going through our, our workflow, having to take extra steps just for the drone footage, it's kind of a pain in the butt. And there still needs a little more tweaking than, uh, than S-Log is, and it isn't quite as flat but it gives an incredible amount of dynamic range. And then some of the, the, the colors we're able to bring back and the highlights we're able to bring back are phenomenal. Uh, it's Again, it's it's by far the best drone footage we've ever captured. So compared to the first, you know, Phantom 3 that I bought, you know, five, six years ago, and now to this drone here, on the remote we have three different modes. We have Sport, Cine, and Normal. Uh, normal mode is what I'm in now, just flying around's fine. Uh, Cine pretty much exaggerates all your camera movements, so nothing is jittery and everything's kind of smooth. But Sport mode, if you're good at flying and you've got some experience behind it, you can maintain, you know, gimbal, joystick, maneuvering. Sport mode lets you get to somewhere between like 38 to, I've had it like 42 miles an hour. 42.6, dude. And you can do a lot of really awesome flybys and you can keep up with boats. And we've been able to, to shoot other objects moving quickly like really well compared to the Mavic 2 which only got maybe on a good day up to like that 32 33 mark so I think it's just a little bit smaller drone a little bit lighter weight battery but uh, this thing freaking flies Okay, so although that's not necessarily recommended, um, and in fact, unless you have it in sports mode, Cine or normal mode, um, even if you disable the obstacle avoidance, uh, it still doesn't think like someone grabbing it. You know, that's a built-in like safety feature. Now, keep in mind, if I was on land, there'd be no reason to do that. But when you're in a boat and the boat's moving, the last thing I want to do is to have this trying to decide where to land the front deck. There's rods, we got trail motor and talons. So I've gotten good at just kind of grabbing underneath it and killing the motors, but it isn't something that's necessarily recommended. As a quick recap, guys, uh, again, from the flexibility that I have in post to the size, uh, and even though it's not that much smaller, it is smaller, uh, all the way down to what this sensor's been able to do and the fact that it came with NDs and, you know, three batteries when you buy the Fly More package, uh, this has by far been the most impressive DJI drone I've had. Again, I've had everything from the threes to the fours to the original Mavic to the Mavic Pro to the Mavic 2 Pro. And uh, a lot of them were good and a lot of them continually got better. But this one really has been uh, kind of that next little bit of level. And, and the fact that I'm able to bring something that small and compact with me on a shoot and it can perform the way I need it to and, and mix in with, you know, cine cameras 
that's a, that's a big deal. So if you guys have any questions on any of these uh, these points that I brought up, I know there's a ton more details we could go and talk about with shooting, maybe another video. I just want to give you kind of a high level of why I chose this drone and why I'm still filming with it. And uh, honestly, until they come out with something that's smaller, faster, better camera, uh, this will be the one. And knowing them, uh, you know, it only takes about a half year to a year in their product cycles, but I'm looking forward to seeing what they got next. But for now, this has been my go-to. And uh, yeah, if you have any questions, comment below. Thanks for watching. Until next time.